Uh, I'd like to welcome Barbara Ainsworth here today. Uh, she is going to be talking to us in ACSM's uh, Distinguished Leaders in Sports Medicine and Exercise Science series. So thank you for coming. Uh, so I just wanted to start a little bit with your background. I mean, where did you grow up, go to high school, where did you go to college, those types of things. Okay, well I'm pleased to be here. I'm a native Californian. I was born and raised in the Southern California area and then went to high school in Fresno, California. And it was in Fresno where I learned how to play golf that mm -hmm. my uncle taught me while I was in high school. And then I went to Fresno State University. Now, mm -hmm. I was in the early 70s when I went to Fresno State. I was going to ask you a little timeline there. Yes. But, okay. So uh, just to set it to there, it was pre-Title IX. Yes. And yeah. so when I made, went to major, I majored in physical education, and that was because during the ninth grade we went to a career fair. And I asked a few of the, the vendors, well, what kind of career opportunities were there? And they said, well, women have two options. You could be a nurse or a teacher. So I thought, well, I don't want to be a nurse because I don't want to wear the little hat and the dress, <laughs> so I might as well be a teacher. And right. What I like to do is, is play golf and play sports. And so I majored, just like my sister and my uncle, I majored in physical education Were at Fresno you, State. So did you play golf in high school then, nope. junior high? When did you start we had no, There were no golf teams or any sports teams for girls. Yeah. I was on a, 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 call, a swimming team in high school mm -hmm. and then the Girls Athletic Association. Mm -hmm. And it was all mostly intramural. I was going to say probably intramural. Stuff. Right. Yeah. And even at, at Fresno State, there were no sports teams except volleyball, tennis, and, and uh, uh, basketball, but I wasn't good enough for any of those. Mm -hmm. So, so uh, your physical education major, uh, exercise physiology class? Well, there was one exercise physiology class, and it was there was no labs. It was just a class the same as the kinesiology or any of the other classes. Yeah. But during one of my classes in the principles of physical education, um, I learned about the America AFERT actually, mm -hmm. and I decided right then and there as a junior in college I was going to be president of my national association. Right. <laughs> AFERT, well it's not necessarily AFERT, yeah. but that's all I knew about. But I knew yeah. I wanted to, to make a, a career out of uh, this area of what I thought was physical education. Uh, now, uh, I'd never taught physical education because mm -hmm. as a trailing end of the baby boomers or in the middle, there were no jobs mm -hmm. when I came out of mm -hmm. college. Mm -hmm. So I went on to graduate school because I heard there was this Title IX coming through. So I went from California to Duluth, Minnesota, oh, okay. where they offered me an assistantship. Mm -hmm. And I uh, ended up coaching volleyball and um, tennis, <laughs> even though I wasn't very good. <laughs> Who were some of the faculty there? Well, Joanne Johnson mm -hmm. was uh, there at the time, and she's uh, what who hired me, and also Ward Wells who mm -hmm. was a, really an old-time mm -hmm. physical educator, mm -hmm. and they hired me in Duluth. And I earned a master's degree and then taught at a small community, or a small women's college in, in uh, Minnesota called the College of St. Benedict. Mm -hmm. I coached swimming. And when was that, Barbara? That was in 1975. Okay. So in and this is with a master's degree. This was now. with a master's degree, and okay. from seventy-five to eighty-two, I coached swimming and tennis and taught physical education in this small women's college. Mm -hmm. And then at uh, and right about nineteen seventy-eight, seventy-nine, I interacted with Jack Kelly from Saint Cloud State University, mm -hmm. who said we're having a regional meeting of the. Uh, American College of Sports oh, Medicine. Okay. Why don't you come on over? And mm -hmm. that was the year that Dave Costell came to speak. Oh, nice. And yeah. I was just turned on. I can imagine. I that thought, was wow, have, exciting. I have found something <laughs> that really interests me. And I was starting to do running and yeah. getting into all of that, which was just starting up in the late 70s. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I decided to go to the University of Minnesota and uh, major in uh, exercise physiology. Okay. And so Bob Surfoss was my uh, advisor, and I interacted with Art Leon, mm -hmm. oh, who was nice. also on my committee. Yeah. yeah. Well, and so I graduated with a PhD in exercise, concentration in exercise physiology in 1987. Okay. And then Art Leon, uh, I, by then I was turned on by the public health aspects mm -hmm. of epidemiology and 
uh, physical activity and, and health and chronic disease. Mm -hmm. So Art Leon offered me a postdoc at the University of Minnesota to work on his grant on uh, how to validate surveys mm -hmm. used in public health. And um, I thought, well, if I'm going to be in a public health school, I might as well earn a master's of public health. Oh, an health. MPH. Huh? And so I earned an MPH in epidemiology. Fantastic. And that started my uh, research career in the evaluation of surveys hmm. and methods to assess physical activity in populations. Okay. So what, now I take it that you probably joined AFERD before ACSM. Oh, I joined AFERD as an undergraduate. Right away in that junior year when, right. you, and when the, you discovered it. And, and I took advantage of their life membership uh -huh. uh, opportunities. So I, I'm a member of Aford. You've gotten your money's worth, right? I, cer <laughs> I certainly have. And I went to Aford for many years. I was involved yeah. in their research consortium. And they were always pleased that, that a member of ACSM would still uh, mm -hmm. be a part of I Aford. think a lot of people did that for a long time. For quite a I mean, even their early ACSM meetings met with Aford a couple times. Well, probably on. what what yes and they had the academy that also yes. met with Aford. Yeah, yeah, there was definitely a lot of yes. interaction right. between those two. I remember reading the Journal of Health, Physical Education and Recreation all the time as an undergrad. And it was very thick. And now that was, it's uh, I'd still get it cuz a life member yeah, so it's very thick. I you could seen just it sort of flip through it and but uh, yeah. that, that was definitely uh, exciting right. stuff at the time. It was what we, this is what I knew. Yeah. 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 So uh, you have your PhD, you have your MPH. And then, it, then well, what? The, at that time, it was the start of the physical activity in public health at CDC. And mm -hmm. one of the uh, uh, Minnesotans, um, Carl Casperson, and one of the leaders in the field was a um, postdoc. At Minnesota and I had chatted with him and he said that there were jobs down at uh, CDC. No, this wasn't Carl. This was Carl Casper. Oh, it was. Yes. Okay, okay. And, uh, and so I had the opportunity to look for work at CDC but I wanted to stay in higher education mm -hmm. when I completed my MPH in 1989. So I took a job at UNC Chapel Hill mm -hmm. in their exercise science program. But, the, but what was real stimulating is I had the opportunity to consult with CDC for nearly 10 years to work on their initiatives for the surveillance of physical activity oh, gee. and wow. to participate in developing a new instrument to measure the Healthy People 2010 mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. recommendations. Mm -hmm. And that was a career highlight yeah. to be affiliated. Was Mike Pratt there then? Mike Pratt was also doing a postdoc at the same time I was at Minnesota and he went on down and took the job at okay, CDC. Okay. So I knew Mike Pratt and Tom Schmidt, who is at CDC now, mm -hmm. also was a Minnesota postdoc. I didn't know that. So Carl came wow. back and cherry picked all the postdocs <laughs> to come on down to CDC. Oh, Mike started out at University of Washington. He did. Where I was, and, and I've followed his career ever since, and he's, he's done very well. He's and been a great I, ambassador. I had no idea that he was at Minnesota for a time. Yeah, he came and did a, a postdoc and uh, earned an MPH as well. I didn't know that. And no. accelerated one year. So, yeah, I mean, so the CDC, you were right there at the right time. I mean, 10 years of, I of did. working with them. I stayed at Chapel Hill for six years mm -hmm. and uh, taught exercise physiology and uh, health fitness and mm -hmm. um, adult fitness for cardiac rehab. Mm -hmm. And then in 1995, uh, South Carolina you, uh, recruited me to come on down into their School of Public Health. Was Russ there then? And or? Russ was in exercise science and Carol Macera was in mm -hmm. epidemiology. and. I developed, I was offered a joint appointment in epidemiology and public, in exercise science. Sounds perfect. And then just that much closer to the CDC, so I was able to participate and, and help. Mm -hmm. then, I, then I was offered the opportunity to direct a prevention research center at South Carolina uh, when Carol Macera left. Mm -hmm. And that's where I was able to uh, start getting into the environment and environmental supports and communities for the uh, support of physical activity. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, it was a, so I stayed there until uh, 2003. And then what? Well, I, you know, I'm a native Californian, and, <laughs> oh, okay. I, you know, and I decided I really wanted to live closer to my family. My mm -hmm. mom was getting old, uh, older as well as my stepmother, and just wanted to uh, get closer to home. Mm -hmm. Plus my uh, mentor at the, who trans 
transition from Art Leon to Carol Macera, uh, took a job at San Diego State. I see. And a position opened. And so I thought, well, I can continue to work with Carol in San Diego. So I moved on out. Which is where you are now. No, I no. stayed there for three years. Oh. And um, I missed having doctoral students. Yeah, oh, um, I see. And so yeah. uh, at, at Arizona State, I was oh, that's right. recruited yeah. to Arizona State. And I've been there four years. And now I'm going nowhere else. <laughs> because when I, I, I got confused yeah. and I said something to Tipton, he goes, no. She's in Tempe. Yeah. <laughs> so. Well, you know, people are saying, are you moving again? I said, no. <laughs> My heart is in the in the West, and I think anybody would know that. That's a beautiful area too. It really, that's is close gorgeous. enough to California. It is within a six-hour drive, and yeah. that's that's better than a that's doable flight across the country. Yeah. Uh, so, but I've continued to engage with uh, my research in the assessment of physical activity. I've been very fortunate to, through my affiliation with CDC, to be invited to participate in the WHO. Uh, global surveillance activities. Mm -hmm. Now that's just starting? Well, or? no, that in, in about 1998 we came together to develop a questionnaire okay. to assess physical activity that all countries could use. Mm -hmm. And that, that was the International Physical Activity Questionnaire, or IPAC. Okay. And so we did a large validation survey a study and then a big, a large prevalence study. And uh, So all that data is in now? And those what? data are finally published. The remarkable thing about it, it was all volunteer. Mm -hmm. uh, none of us were paid to do any of the work, but it was all uh, of us who had a passion mm -hmm. uh, to see the advancement of physical activity. Yeah, well, so that, that data must be extremely valuable now. Oh, they, they are. The data. you glad you guys started that when you did? I mean, well, we sh you know, we are very fortunate to have done those studies yeah. and have those data. And oh, it was with Adrian Bowman and uh, colleagues at Mike Pratt at CDC and mm -hmm. a number of others. The, the neat thing back then is we would meet every year at uh, ACSM. We would have a room, we'd, to CDC would pay for some refreshments for us mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. we would just meet and collaborate and folks would be coming from all over the world mm -hmm. uh, for those meetings. So well, there was a, a point in time then that you started to transition away from AFERD more? Oh uh, yes, and I think um, that was probably about five years ago or six years ago. Which is not that long not ago. Not that long ago. I continued to go because I was involved in the research consortium. Mm -hmm. Then I was uh, on the editorial board of the uh, research quarterly for exercise and yeah. sport. Mm -hmm. And then they had me uh, chairing their grants, the research consortium grants committee. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I enjoyed seeing the, the folks at the meetings. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the, there weren't that many interesting topics, few, but it mm -hmm. was the people that made yeah, the place. Yeah. And I don't remember because I dropped out a long time ago. Did you ever become president? Nope, nope. No? Uh, <laughs> but I think that I. I have achieved that goal through uh, ACSM, yeah, yeah. and uh, just was elected as the uh, incoming president-elect, and I am uh, I'm just delighted to have the opportunity to lead a, uh, an organization that is the largest in the world and has respect by many. And vibrant. And, and vibrant exciting. and alive and exciting. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, well congratulations well, on that. Well thank you. So in, in your time around ACSM, um, you've had a chance to really see it change and grow and, and so forth. And the, the, one of the very first meetings I went was in San Diego back in the um, early 90s, I guess it was. And it was at this small town and country hmm. hotel. And in fact, they had a, um, the, the, what was then the women's breakfast was maybe a handful of 16 or 17. Uh, individuals and it was very small and I've seen it grow oh. and uh, become much much more diverse mm -hmm. uh, n aside just the study of sport which w seemed that it was uh, in the early days mm -hmm. and also um, some health it's it's when I came back uh, into the board after being away from the, into the, the board of trustees mm -hmm. I was just surprised at how, what, how what had happened. the breadth for, into policy now, um, certainly into uh, injury prevention in a very large way in relating to, uh, to policies in the environment. Mm -hmm. I'm co-chair for the American Fitness Index. 
Ah. With Walt Thompson. I was going to say, we just heard yeah. a little about that with Walt. So. And that has been a lot of fun and a uh, lot of interest and I believe growth that we'll be able to see uh, in relationship to the value of physical activity, promotional efforts within communities. Well, I think when you have cities competing with each other to see who's the most fit, that's a good thing. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, everybody wants to, you know, to put on a bright light and, yeah. and shine. It looked like a good place to live. And, That's right. And, yeah. you know, and those, those cities that are at the lower, lower half, including where I live in the <laughs> Phoenix metropolitan area, you know, have, have challenges uh, regarding the infrastructure for uh, public transportation mm -hmm. and, and uh, the like. I, I think um, Seattle and Portland are pretty high. They're in the yeah. top ten. Yeah, so I'm, yeah. I'm proud of that. Yeah, I think so, and they're <laughs> lovely places to yeah. be to go for a vacation. They are. Yeah. yeah. So, um, have you have you been involved with any of the ACSM journals? I know you have been with RQ and and so forth, was, editorial boards and. That I was a section thing. editor for epidemiology for medicine and science okay. and sports. Okay. Um, oh over 10 years ago, mm -hmm. and that's the only one that I've uh, been involved with. Mm -hmm. I've, I've been on the uh, editorial board for the President's Council on Physical Fitness and Sport, their uh, research digest, mm -hmm. and a member of their scientific advisory board. I've enjoyed the, those little things they put out, the digest, I guess it's called. Those are very well done. Oh, they are. I thank you for that. They're yeah. outstanding. And yeah. uh, there's a lot of thought that goes into selecting the topic mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. just the right author who can yeah, I've, all, I've enjoyed those very much, and yeah. the little way they pull that quotation out, and oh, yes. they're always so well referenced. You know, they're they're great. Uh, well, thank you. When students have an interest, I go, wait, I know that. Here, look at this. Yeah. Here's a start for you. So. And many of our ACSM members have written. Mm -hmm. I would say probably eight out of ten of the authors are members of ACSM. Yeah. yeah. Well. Um, don't want to put you on the spot too much, but uh, what do you think uh, for the college here coming up? Uh, well, the a college, lot of good things. But. The college has a lot of activities uh, that are in process now, and my, one of my major roles is to keep keep the ball rolling. Mm -hmm. And the exercises medicine is certainly yeah. is a uh, one of the two signature programs. And during my three-year term, I hope to increase the breadth of physical activity counseling for, for individuals in underserved communities. Mm -hmm. So we can reach out to not only uh, people of color, but to people of different socioeconomic strata mm -hmm. in rural communities as well. You know, Walt was talking about his program in Atlanta. Uh, I'm sure you and he have talked about it, but that sounds like an incredible program. It's, you know, there are, there. I remember President Bush, the first President Bush, talked about the thousand points of light. Mm -hmm. And certainly that is one of the points of light. Yeah. The yeah. Uh, people who are doing things, small steps make to make large gains. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, Walt should be commended for working with youth, yeah. uh, inner city youth, for, for being physically active. Well, I, you know, and I think we're, we're, we're moving into this very clear direction now of seeing physical activity right in the area that you've been working in, and that is public health. That's right. You know, with Russ Pate's work and Paffenbarger and yours and so forth. I mean, people are really starting to, to understand how important it is. It's not just play games. You know, you I know, think I'm, uh, a, I'm a early, an early example of one who earned a PhD in exercise physiology, and people laugh when I tell them, my dissertation was looking at lactate removal on high in elite athletes mm -hmm. because I moved from exercise physiology into public health. Mm -hmm. And I think we're seeing a lot more researchers who have done basic research that have moved over and said, you know, if we want to change uh, behavior, we've got to do it on a, a population scale mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to move it. And, and um, Miriam Nelson spoke at the Rathbone lecture this year, and she talked about uh, using a sectorial approach, you know, mm -hmm. and really uh, trying to, to reach uh, the public health view. Mm -hmm. That's how we're going to change health yeah, and, and I, how we've done it in the past. I agree. I mean, I, I've studied a lot of, you know, basically the history of public health, and physical activity was not even on the radar screen. 
I mean, it was just not in, in existence in, in that realm. In 1989, I, I presented a paper at the American Public Health Association. I was one of two papers. Yeah, oh, I and believe it. And just yeah. two years ago, they, they started a physical activity section by Steve Hooker. Beautiful. Yeah, yeah. so they're, they're slow in coming to understand the importance of public health. Mm -hmm. uh, I would say they're behind the game. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, what a what a change though. You know. What a change. We yeah. yes, from infectious to non communicable Absolutely. diseases. Yeah, chronic disease. Right. Well, I told you thirty minutes goes really fast. It, it's really gone here. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank I sure you, Barbara. It, I appreciate it. It was nice it's of an you honor. to come over and talk.